So howdy to all of you who are stopping by here. Um, we we finished a, a raffle for today, and we're going to be doing raffles for the next couple nights. It's an anniversary week. We're going to have fun. We're still going to talk D&D, but we're also going to do stuff like play Jackbox games, you know, party games together. Um, you know, things that are just fun and, and things that we can share in. Yeah, hey, let me know. Um, I'm I'm itching to get to my local homebrew store. Uh, just it's like ten minutes away, not that far, and uh, and look at ingredients and and get something going there. And my my cat, hey, get down from there. No, that doesn't mean you can claw. No. You give her a piece of hot dog, and, and suddenly she's like, "Oh well, I'm gonna hold your, I'm gonna hold your stuff hostage." You know, just for another piece of hot dog. Oh, I believe it, Luke, and um, uh, I will, I will film it. I will upload it to my computer, put it together with Power Director, and uh, and I will be happy to share that adventure with you all uh, as I go and I brew. Uh, you know, based on your all suggestion and recipe that we we kind of went through that that process, uh, um, generating as I brew my first batch of old wheat water. Oh, wow, Luke. Uh, to, to get a custom uh, two-gallon fired stoneware fermenter. And here, I, I'm excited because, I, you know, I'm like, oh, I bet I can get one of those, like, one gallon, those, like, kind of, like, semi-transparent plastic, uh, you know, barrels. That is, it's sort of like a, a brown, brown, yellow, transparent plastic. It's like, oh, you know, baby's first brew kit kind of a thing. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, is that what it is, a Mr. Beer? Yep, it's, uh, don't do that. Okay, well, I'll, I'll take your recommendation. And I'm like, yay, baby's first beer. I can do this too. Goo, goo, ga, ga. All right, now, for any of you who are curious about what is this Sidekicks thing, I'm going to link to you um, where to where you can get this Unearthed Arcana supplement. Well, un untested supplement. Um, as Wizards on a monthly basis puts out alternative rules, things to consider, uh, things that might be coming up in a future, uh, in a future, uh, you know, hardcover bound book. And so tonight will be this supplement right over here. Gonna go grind Minecraft? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Luke, no problem. Uh, we're gonna get through this supplement, and then um, I'll, you know, we'll talk. If anyone wants to sponsor minis, they can in the meantime. And then uh, what I'll do is I'll switch over, and then we'll play TKO or the Murder Trivia Party. Or There's a lot of fun stuff that we can do. And you said Mr. Beer tastes like it's been through once already. Got it. <laughs> yep, yep. So just keep an ear open, Luke, and uh, happy Minecrafting. And remember, one more. One more box. One more box. Or like cube or whatever. One more. One more. One more. Just got to dig one more. Just got to harvest one more. Just got to plant one more. <laughs> uh. All right. Unearthed Arcana Sidekicks. We've talked a lot about uh, different concepts, mass combat, uh, the ship, uh, you know, uh, sailing on the open seas, and, and uh, you know, that that is the seed that has been planted for our, our future uh, viewer game with you all. This one is delving into sidekicks. This article gives you a straightforward way to play and level up a sidekick in Dungeons & Dragons. The rules presented here take a creature with a low challenge rating and give it levels as you gain levels. On your adventures, you sometimes meet a townsperson, an animal, or another creature and forge a special relationship with them. That creature might even join you on your adventures, which usually sparks this question. How does this sidekick get better as you gain levels? 
As you become more powerful, the foes you face are likely to become far, or, or, or um, I'm sorry, are likely to become too dangerous for Vera the Guard, Biscuit the Mastiff, or another companion you befriended in the early days of your adventuring career. This article answers the question, giving your sidekick a clear, pardon me, a clear path of advancement. And the standard disclaimer, this is playtest content. So, just because Wizards put this out doesn't mean that you could just bring it to your tabletop as a DM or as a player. Communication is always key, and make sure if you want to incorporate these rules, everyone is on board with it. In these rules, a sidekick is a creature who is your friend and who accompanies you on adventures. It's essentially a second character you play. The DM might decide to play it instead, or you could co-play it with other players at the table. The sidekick can be any type of creature with a stat block in the monster manual or another D&D book, but it must meet these prerequisites. Its challenge rating must be one or lower, and the two of you must be friends. The DMG offers guidance on customizing a monster, including giving it levels in a class. That approach works with any monster in the game, but it can be complicated since it requires the monster's challenge rating to be recalculated. The approach to sidekicks in this article focuses on giving levels to a low CR creature without ever having to recalculate its challenge rating, or CR. Gaining a sidekick class. When your sidekick joins you, it gains a sidekick class. Choose which class it will have for the rest of its career. A warrior, an expert, or a spellcaster. Kind of that, that triumvirate, right? You have, you have wizards, rogues, and fighters. And those are your three main archetypes for an adventurer. And from there, it's various blends of any of the three. These sidekick classes are detailed below. They are reminiscent of the classes available to player characters, but are simpler. To gain the Expert or the Spellcaster class, a creature must have at least one language in its stat block that it can speak. Whenever you gain a level, your sidekick also gains a level. It doesn't matter how much of your recent adventures the sidekick experienced. The sidekick levels up because of a combination of the adventures it shares with you and on its own training. Whenever the sidekick gains a level, it gains one hit die, and its hit point maximum increases. To determine the amount of the increase, roll the hit die and add its constitution modifier. It gains a minimum of one hit point per level. Once your companion has a sidekick class, the sidekick's proficiency bonus is determined by its level in that class, as shown in the class's table. Whenever the sidekick's proficiency bonus increases by one, add one to the two hit modifier of all the attacks in the stat block and increase the DC's... You're like, why are you reading this? Is it, well, I'm reading it because it's there, but I, I don't want this to sound complicated. What happens on your player character sheet when your proficiency bonus goes up? However, they're including it here to make sure that it's thorough. If you want that step-by-step, -step, if you want to see, well, here's the similarities. Are there differences? And if so, what, the, well, what are they? ASIs, or ability score increases, or as we call them, stat bumps. Whenever the sidekick gains the Ability Score Improvement class feature, remember to adjust anything in its stat block that relies on an ability modifier that you increase with the feature. For example, if the sidekick has an attack that uses Strength, increase that attack's modifier to hit and damage if the sidekick's Strength modifier increases. Again, like Character Building 101. Corita asks, what about me? What about Zoidberg? I don't know, what, what do you mean? What do you mean, what about you? If it's unclear whether a melee attack in the stat block uses strength or dex, the attack can use either. Your sidekick must have the multi-attack action in its stat block. If it does not and it gains the extra attack class feature, remember that extra attack works with the action, not with the multi-attack action. In short, you can't use extra attack with multi-attack. That is an important distinction. Because even by CR1, you will find monsters that might get to... Uh, swipe or bite twice. And extra attack is with attack. Multi-attack is an action itself.
Oh, Black Wolf called your donkey name. Oh, gotcha. Oh, yeah, such as High or Brayson. I'm sorry, Black Wolf. Yes. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. So, yes. Um, so, for Norali, uh, played by Dark Wolf, uh, she has a plant, a flying snake, and a donkey. Um, any one of those could theoretically, if they're friends with her, uh, as per these experimental rules, become a sidekick and gain sidekick levels. Now, are we going to do that on Tuesday? Uh, maybe not. We'll see. Because I've been making some certain extra special, uh, considerations regarding, uh, well, the kind of the Pokemon adventure that we've been going on on Tuesdays. Hey, 12 for 10, welcome. I've been doing very well. Welcome to year two of Matty Morgs. Uh, is this is our, our anniversary week? Technically happened a little like the actual day happened a couple days ago, but we're we're back at it. We're we're in our workshop mode, we're having fun, building energy. Uh it, it's great. A warrior sidekick grows in martial prowess as it fights by your side. It might be a soldier, a town guard, a battle trained beast, or any other creature honed for combat. A sidekick gains the following class features as it gains levels in this class, as summarized on the warrior table. Bada boom. Goes all the way to 20 because you can, right? This thing is supposed to level up beside you. Mola Mola XD. Welcome. It's good to see you again. And you know what? For those of you who I haven't had the opportunity uh, since, uh, well, before I took the two weeks off in January here to revamp for our anniversary, um... Happy 2019 to you all, and I look forward to having an another amazing broadcast year with you all. So, just like you'd find here, just like you'd find, this is making me look bad here. <laughs> there we are. So let's go to let's go to fighter, right? I mean, warrior's not exactly the same, but look. 20 levels of advancement and here you go right your archetype extra attack all of this all the stats that you're going to find in your bread and butter player's handbook are here including the the explanation for what they are oh thank you mola mola let's have an awesome year together you know let's share stories let's share ideas uh, let's grow and all be better people because of each other's energy, inspiration, our interaction with each other, and, and let's continue to meet new people along the way also. Uh, so at first level, the sidekick gains, a proficien uh, gains proficiency in one saving throw of your choice. In addition, the sidekick gains proficiency in three skills of your choice from the following list. I don't need to go into the minutiae of it it's here uh the link to the document was put in chat if you need me to share it again actually I'll, I'll just do it right now what am i out a couple electrons there you go if the sidekick is a humanoid it also gains proficiency with all armor shields and simple martial weapons now this is important because remember it said that your sidekick could be biscuit the mastiff Starting at first level, the sidekick can use a bonus action to regain hit points as per second wind. Hoping to finish your thesis this semester? Oh, that'd be great. And it, uh, what's your thesis? Uh, what, what is the topic, Mola Mola? Uh, about, which, uh, about what are you writing? After going over this, can you look at uh, the most absurd creature that could be a sidekick? Um, I suppose we could look in the monster manual and see. Um, by, challenge, by challenge rating 1... That's, I mean, unless we, like, homebrew something or we, I don't know, strip a Tarrasque down from, like, CR29 to CR1, uh, a lot of it's going to be, you know, um, a wolf, a house cat, a dog, a uh, town guard, you know, some, some of the things that are, that are put out there. Genome annotation and analysis of three species of plant. Ah, so you are, uh, um... Is this specifically like medical medical biology, or are you in, uh, or is this a, a specialty with uh, like a a plant based biology? 
um, or some sort of like molecular biology. Now, if you if you don't want to say, it could be personal details. You don't have to, uh, but it's. I still thank you for sharing that. I, I love, I love hearing about what all of you out there uh, enjoy as a hobby, what you do as a career, what you're pursuing for your education. Um, you know, just bits and pieces about you all, uh, because it is it is so inspiring as well. Okay, X Cat. Yeah, because they're all they're gonna start at CR one and level up from there. Uh, okay, so it's getting uh, it's getting something from fighters, danger senses from barbarian, uh, improved critical. Uh, hey, not too shabby, huh? A nineteen or twenty. Um, that is from a fighter subclass. Extra attack is pretty standard on uh, on uh, on uh, fighters and other other classes there, uh, monks and and the like. Battle readiness at seventh level. Uh, after the psychic reaches seventh level, it has advantage on initiative rolls. Pretty good. Indomitable. That is also a fighter subclass uh, feature. Uh, can reroll a saving throw that it fails, but it must use the new roll. Improved defense. Uh, the sidekick's armor class increases by one. That's just a straight up like a, a weapon or a, a, a feeder, a, a feeder, like a fighter feature, a paladin feature, and um, rangers. I think can each get like that improved armor uh, fighting style. Plant based bio, hopefully, will be useful for uh, for crops. Oh, yeah. Well, um, you know whether whether it's organic or it's just sustainable or whether it's modern farming, um, you know, and, and then we get into natural hybrids or we get into uh, genetic uh, genetically modified organisms, which I don't mind. It, you know, science doesn't scare me. That people want to make a a strain of corn that is healthier, uh, that is, you know, better for us, or, you know, creating uh, there's that high there's that high beta carotene rice that was uh, made a while back ago, uh, called golden rice because of the the coloration, uh, through uh, through projects like that, and uh, one of the major points was to grow to give a, an inexpensive but nutritional grain to impro in, uh, to uh, impoverished people um, and so that this naturally golden rice that uh, that is growing beta carotene in it um, you know is is being made available uh, to people who are uh, in some sort of like a nutrient deficient region um, or just otherwise you know need the need it anyway I think that's a whole side topic I don't, I don't know if GMOs is really a, a hot button, but you know what? Whatever. It's twenty. It was twenty eighteen. It's now twenty nineteen, and I, I think people can get upset over just about anything. So, I, <laughs> let's talk D and D. Hopefully, you all aren't upset about D and D because that's why you're here. <laughs> oh, spit! You know, oh, J man, when you're here, let me know because I, I want to talk to you, brother. I think it's CR1 or lower, X-Cat. It's just that one is the limit. Oh, Azrael is here. Hey, Azrael. Azrael, we, we had a raffle going on a little earlier. We are giving away some minis, and people were opening up boxes. It was a lot of fun. Because this is... For all of you who are raiding, welcome to year two... Of Matty Morgs. Technically, the anniversary is a couple days ago, but here we are in year two. Too many tumbleweeds. Great to see you. J Man, I saw you broadcasting the other day. I'm sorry I didn't get a chance to, to pop in. I think you're broadcasting uh, Burlap Daughter tonight, too. But, um, J Man. Oh, and here we are. J Man, keep rocking on, brother. Uh, I've been doing a lot of reflecting because I, I took two weeks off from broadcasting in order to to update the channel, just get a lot of life stuff done. And, um, you know, J-Man, uh, you are the first other broadcaster uh, to really come in and, and to take that chance on us here, on this channel. Um, you know, some rando dude talking about D&D. Uh, you know, probably I, at the time I probably had like three people 
uh, watching me. And I don't say that with disgust, but, you know. And then you, you dropped in with, like, a 70-person uh, raid that night. And I'll tell you, Journey... That meant a lot to me, brother. Uh, we couldn't be here as we are without you taking that chance on a small streamer. On just some obscure dude talking D&D. &D. Um, and I've carried that with me every single day. And I'm very appreciative of that. And I'll tell you, as much as I can, I've, I've tried to pay that forward. Um, you know, rating, supporting, giving people that voice... And even turning people back on to you. And uh, and I'll tell you, Journey, also, I mean, from the people that I've met through your channel. Um, actually, I was over at uh, Creative Creature Carla's channel because she was back broadcasting the other night. And uh, as you know, uh, I've been able to give her some business, uh, a commission, uh, to work on a, on a project. And so, um, J-Man, I, I just hope, like, you know, in your heart of hearts... Uh, you know that uh, that you're doing good stuff, even, even if your heart's beating a little fast sometimes because you get on a you get on a hot topic. Heck, just before you raided, we were talking about uh, you know the development of um, of uh, genetically modified rice uh, and uh, how it's you know uh, how it's more nutritious and it, it it was being developed in order to help impoverished people in uh, you know in under underserved areas and regions and countries. And also, we're talking D&D &D and, and how to level up your sidekick. So it's a very eclectic experience. But anyway, J-Man, because you're here, and look, for all of you who came over with J-Man, pull up a table. You're sitting at a table, or pull up a, a chair at the table, because uh, you're sitting in a game store. We're having a fun talk, and I appreciate you all for coming over with him as well. And hopefully I'll get the chance to get to know you as we're looking forward to a brand new, uh, to year two of Matty Morgs. Your evil twin? Oh, yes. Uh, Zuller Pie has an evil twin. J-Man, I don't know if you knew this. Uh, we discovered Zuller Pie's evil twin. And actually, uh, there's a stat sheet for that twin out there somewhere. Yep, it, you, you try and help the small streamers, J-Man, and it it helps. I'm very thankful for that. And I, if I ever seem like I'm not appreciative of, of that fact, of what you do, or, like, in general, or what you've done uh, for our community here... Um, then you you need to just knock some sense back into me, and I, I can't be upset. Uh, Hippogriff, Brass Dragon, Wormling, Animated Armor, and Panthers are technically viable sidekicks. Oh, yep, I'm sorry. We gotta, we gotta spam. Uh, because we love J-Man so much, we have to make sure that he stays humble. And so we do that by burying him in his own emote of J-Man sucks. <laughs> yes, Mola Mola. Um, if you want to see that Unearthed Arcana, there's the link for you. Mr. Glenn, howdy. Welcome, uh, welcome aboard. And apparently my cat wants to play fetch also. Ready? Go get it. <laughs> yep, Barbarian Jim's in on it. Um, oh, I love it. You all, you all bring such uh, creativity and energy and it is, uh, and oh, Ezreal also, thank you for saying the happy anniversary. Um, this is, uh, I'm, I'm very, I'm very happy. Zuller Pie, thank you for that as well. I think I got on a soapbox talking to J-Man. Uh, and, and so <laughs> I missed out on some of your all's compliments. Thank you very much. Oh, oh, I, I love that BB Wolf uh, emote too. You know, I stopped into her channel the other day and uh, and said hi, and I was watching her. Uh, I was watching her. Uh, it, it was Destiny Two, I think she was playing. But uh, yep, I, I got to meet uh, uh, BB Wolf uh, Three J Man, um, and I, I'd like to. I, I'm hoping that as the channel develops and I get some more art assets and whatnot, I might be able to use her for some voice talent. Uh, I know that sh uh, that you've used her. Uh, for, uh, for some voice work on your channel. Uh, she does an awesome job. And so uh, I'm hoping I can create a circumstance uh, with her and there's another voice actor in the community. And uh, between the two of them, I might be able to have some fun characters uh, be given voice uh, during specific events on the channel. Genuine people, Journey. Uh, yep.
I'll have to catch you the next time you stream too, because I, I think I have a uh, another uh, subscription re-up, and I'll I'll type in something fun to you. <laughs> Uh, so as we were talking about, and thank you, by the way, for checking out those uh, CR1 creatures, X-Cat. Um, does that mean I have to leave? No, Azrael. Unless, are you not the genuine Azrael? Have you been replaced by a doppelganger? By a, a pod person? I don't know. In that case, maybe you're just a genuine replica. <laughs> Right? It, it's sort of like, it's the difference between getting a used car and a certified used car. So, Azrael, you're our certified used car, then. You still have a little bit of a warranty. And probably not as many weird stains. <laughs> Azrael's the evil AI. <laughs> <laughs> So, <laughs> Indomitable and uh, Improved and Superior Critical is another fighter feature that uh, this template for your sidekick can get uh, by 15th level. Um, even though, remember here, you have, uh, right? You still get things at each of the level. It's just You see how it goes up to two uses or ASIs, that kind of a thing. I saw his name tag. He's not Azrael. He's Adriel. Ooh. Black Wolf is uh, calling you out there. The second type of sidekick, and, and J-Man and, and crew, I'm, I, I was, I was kind of blathered on because I'm in a very sentimental mood, right? This is the anniversary, um, technically, like a, the anniversary celebration of the channel. We've been having a lot of really good energy. And, uh, you know, when y'all came over, like, it was really moving. And, um, you know, I, I know I'm talking sidekicks here, but I, I want you to know that I appreciate you, uh, even if I'm continuing on here. Um, Y'all are in my, my, not like a heartworm for a dog, but y'all are in my heart. How about that? <laughs> Is Journeyman a, C no, X-Cat, uh, Journeyman, Journeyman is, is, is gonna, that dude has been through, uh, a lot, and I say that with all due respect, uh, he has a lot of experience under his belt. Uh, so he is definitely beyond a challenge rating one uh, NPC. Although that would be interesting. How how would we stat Journeyman? You know, just it, it, even if we just kind of chose an arbitrary level, like you know, a fifth level, whatever, a sixth level, whatever, or something along those lines. Uh, so the expert is the second type of template you can apply to your sidekick. Remember, a sidekick can be the town guard you, befriend, uh, you befriended, uh, you know, that, that scampy orphan that you rescued. Uh, or it could even be, uh, you know, a dog you adopted. Pardon me. The expert is a master of certain tasks or knowledge. The sidekick, uh, this sidekick follows a path that favors cunning over brawn or spellcasting. It might be a scout, a musician, a librarian, a clever street kid, a wily merchant, or a burglar. A burgling burglar that burgles. To gain the expert class, a creature must have an at least one language in its stat block that it can speak. A sidekick gains the following class features as it gains levels in this class, as summarized on the expert table. Again, uh, so this is going to be more like the rogue and bard out of the, the PHB in advancement. And just like you saw with the prior uh, template to give to your sidekick... Uh, this is going to go over, you know, your your bonus proficiencies. Um, you know, so this is a saving throw of your choice, dex, int, or cha. Uh, gets five skills of your choice. And, uh, well, by 13th level, gets proficiency in another skill. Um, and and a tool. Expertise. So you, you're super specialized in a skill. Um, and, in fact, this is um, choose two of them. And you get another one at 6th uh, at and 17th. Helpful. The sidekick is adept at uh, giving well-timed assistance. Sidekick can take the help action as a bonus action. That's really cool. That's really cool because that'll give you advantage on, you know, on your turn. So it'd be kind of like, you know, you and you and the scampy uh, street urchin you took in are fighting side by side to, you know, put down the evil mayor of the, the town that's 
I don't know, sacrificing orphans or whatever. Um, but uh, that's a really cool ability to have a sidekick that can back you up like that. Oh no! It's the evil twin! Happy anniversary, Maddie! <laughs> Journey is a reluctant, foul-mouthed paladin. <laughs> and I would believe that because that man, that man does stick to his oaths. Iprilux. Not clear, uh, clearly not the twin of Zulerpai. It's good to see you again, too, Iprilux. Welcome back. <laughs> it's been a while, right? Well, I'm happy to be an alternative, Corita. Uh, yes, yeah, so if there's a Maddie, then the evil twin is Yatam. Uh, cunning action. Uh, so you can see we're borrowing from other lists here. Cunning action at second level. Jack of many trades from the Bard, uh, the Bard list of features. Uh, ASIs, that is just natural. But you can see here, look, 8, 10, 12, 14. Normally it's 4, 8, 12, 16, 19. And here we get, uh, we get these uh, sort of mid-tier ones, like a fighter would normally get. Extra attack, bread and butter. Uh, evasion is in there. Monks, uh, rogues, get that. I think Bards, eh, maybe Bards don't get that. I'd have to double check. Inspiring help. Starting at ninth level, the sidekick's assistance becomes especially inspiring. When the sidekick uses its helpful bonus action, the creature who receives the help also gains a 1d6 bonus to the d20 roll. If that roll is an attack roll, the creature can forego adding the bonus to it. And then if the attack hits, the creature can add the bonus to the attack's damage roll against the target. At 18th level, the bonus increases to 2d6. Reliable talent. Oh, reliable talent is solid. It's a good rogue ability. Uh, whenever it makes an ability check that includes its whole proficiency bonus, it can treat and that. See, they say whole proficiency bonus and not because jack of all trades gives you a bonus, but only a half. Uh, but it can treat the roll of a d20 of a nine or lower as a ten. Sharp mind gains proficiency in int, whiz, or charisma saving throws, and stroke of luck, uncanny knack for turning failure into success. The sidekick's attack misses a target within range. It can turn a miss into a hit. Pretty good for a capstone ability, huh? And then lastly, if you want a spell cast in Doggo, well, maybe not Doggo, if it says uh, it must have at least one language. I don't know, if you want to count Dog, maybe. Have fun with it, right? In fact, we went over that Dungeons and uh, Dungeons and Doggies, uh, the Kickstarter expansion, uh, uh, last year. Uh, that was a lot of fun. But still, I don't know, adapt this. This is all playtest rules anyway. Have fun. Elbrin, a paladin of tyranny with a bard sidekick. Oof, that'd be scary, huh? Kind of the evil Sir Robin. <laughs> he bravely runs away, away. Uh, so, same as you get before, but of course, different proficiencies. Uh, Wiz Int Cha. In, oh, I'm sorry. I, I, I gotta go over here. Psychic might be a hedge wizard, a priest, a soothsayer, a spell-wielding performer, or a person with magic in their veins. Uh, must be able to have at least one language in its stat block it can speak, and a sidekick gains the following class features. It gains levels in this class, as summarized here. Uh, of course, different skills, arcana, history, insight, things that you'd expect from a spellcaster. Uh, it does gain spell casting. At first level, the sidekick gains the ability to cast spells. Uh, if the creature already has the spell casting trait, this feature repla this feature replaces that trait. Choose a class: bard, cleric, druid, sorcerer, warlock, or wizard. Th this choice determines the spell list, spell casting ability, and spell casting focus used by the sidekick, as shown on the spell casting table. And so what you'd expect. Bards use musical instruments, cleric, holy symbols, and so forth. At first level, the sidekick knows three cantrips of your choice from its spell list. The sidekick learns additional cantrips of your choice at higher levels, as shown in the cantrips known column of the spellcaster table. The spellcaster table shows how many spell slots the sidekick has to cast. 
like the player's handbook. I, I don't want this to be like, oh my god, I can't keep track of this. This is all new information. That this is this is literally the worst. <laughs> Most of this is really just a reprint and a, a slight reshuffling or reorganization of abilities you're finding in the player's handbook. It's almost like it's uh, you know creating a kind of a custom blend class. So it'll get its bonus proficiencies in spell casting, and here. Does this spell progression look familiar? There's nothing new here. Um, so you get your spells known, right? Spells known, three, three, four, five. So it's not like a wizard, more like a sorcerer bard uh, kind of a thing. Um, anyway, we keep going. You, there's your spell casting ability. You're going to find it in your PHB, depending on the, the class that you're applying. Your focus. Magical recovery at second level. Uh, when it finishes a short rest, it can recover expended spell slots. The spell slots can have a combined level that's equal to or less than half its level in this class rounded up. And none of the spell slots can be six level or higher. That's standard what you find on other classes that have a similar ability. Of all the SRD classes, uh, asks Corida, with any official subclass and such, what is the single one you'd pick if it would be the only one you could ever play again? Um, it's a very good question. Probably Bard? Because you can do ranged, you can do melee, you can do magic. That's uh, not even just on the Bard list. Um, you know, you get a little bit of curing, you get some attack, you get some debuff stuff. Um, you know, you're, you're pretty decent at skills. Uh, so, you know, Bard is really flexible. Um, it's very easy if, if, to, if you play a Bard, especially a College of Valor Bard, uh, to be a, effectively a Paladin. I mean, you could call yourself a Paladin and be a, a call, like mechanically be a College of Valor Bard. And I, I think it works well. Just, you know, your oaths are a little bit different or, uh, you know, the way that you uh, use your skills. It's... Uh, it's a uh, it's a very interesting challenge to put out there, Corrida. Uh, ASIs, um, though this is the traditional eight, twelve, sixteen, nineteen. Uh, potent cantrip starting at sixth level. The psychic can add its spell casting ability modifier to the damage it deals with any cantrip, and empowered spells at tenth level. Uh, choose one school of magic. Whenever the psychic casts a spell of that school. By expending a spell slot, the sidekick can add its spellcasting ability modifier to the spell's damage roll or healing roll, if any. Focus casting. The sidekick has advantage on any constitution saving throw it makes to maintain concentration. That's pretty good. Um, and signature spells. Uh, as a capstone ability, choose two spells that the sidekick knows from this class. Eligible spells are a first, second, and third level. The sidekick can cast each of the chosen spells once at third level without expending a spell slot. After the sidekick casts a spell in this way, the sidekick regains the ability to cast that spell with this feature when it finishes a short or a long rest. Raytel, uh, fighter would have been uh, uh, fighter would have been my my backup because you can make it versatile um, as well. Uh, see, it's tough because you know what. An Eldritch Knight could be a paladin as well if you really wanted to flavor it as such. Uh, but you make a good point, Rytel. You know what? It, it's fun to, to think like that, huh? All right. There you go, boys and girls, ladies and gentlemen, goblins of all ages. I think the rules for this are fairly straightforward. I do think that if you run this at your tabletop, um, it, it'll make it more complicated because you do have other full sets of actions to consider, uh, full sets of spell choices. Um, 
Would I allow this at my tabletop? Mm, probably not. Not because I think it's broken. Um, I just, I personally don't think it's it's necessary. Um, but that that's anecdotal to me and my experience. Where I can uh, where I can see this unearth arcana or uh, you know if it turns out to be published later on, where it has a strength, would be in uh, a D and D game where maybe it's one or two players and a DM. That way the players have a kind of a not a full character to pilot. But at least, like, you know, uh, an NPC with more options to pilot. And so, therefore, we have a party of two that goes to a party of four that's running underneath the, the Dungeon Master. Also, the concept of getting sidekicks in D&D &D has been around for a good long while. Uh, <laughs> uh, I could recommend a, a good comic to you all called Nodwick. Um, but, yeah, it's, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's fun. Uh, it's fun to consider logistics hey if everyone's on point and knows what they want to do then maybe it won't be a huge time sink uh if you have five people at your table six people at your table and then everyone wants a sidekick uh that could start getting a little tricky um and of course you can always ask yourself well do i want to use these kind of you know medium build npc stat blocks that are recommended here or should i just gen up a, a whole new character which Really, that, that's your personal call. I th so I think having this is a good option. It's something fun to think about. I don't think there's really anything in here that would make uh, one of these sidekicks uh, very um, broken. I mean, on first reaction, by, by being able to offer the help action as a bonus action from the expert, uh, I was like, ooh, that, that could be... Uh, that could be very... Uh, maybe that could be abused. Um, especially because then the sidekick is getting a lot more hit points and, and is more survivable. Um, but if you also have effectively uh, a full caster at your side that can throw out a fireball beside you, uh, hopefully not with you in it, um, is the help action as a bonus really going to be that broken? Probably not. I don't think so. I guess it, you could always try running some math, you know, do some sample encounters. Uh, Corita says, I think sidekicks are a good temporary thing when it fits the story progression and say, it's an NPC closely attached to that one player's character. Yeah, if it's appropriate for the story, have at it. I wouldn't just auto-include them in every adventure. Critical role content is considered homebrew if that has not been answered. Um, oh, I, I did not daily, but thank you for picking up on that. Uh, Elbrin says, I'd consider it for a second string group, allowing each player to have their sidekick as a subgroup in a larger organization. So, see, now that could be fun as well, where, you know, you, you kind of go off and on again, where one week is the main PCs, but, you know, meanwhile, across the swamp of death, uh, as the party members sent out their sidekicks to go do, like, a side job. Uh, that could be fun, where everyone is playing NPCs as PCs, but they're NPCs, but they're PCs, but they're NPCs. <laughs> and yeah, Elbrun, yeah, you make the point, just because a player is a sidekick doesn't mean it'd be available all the time. I mean, you tend to think that, right? Like, you know, Robin is almost always with Batman kind of a thing, or... Um, you know, we think of sidekicks as, 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 like, baggage you kind of carry around with you. You know, like, active, like, helpful baggage, but, you know, they're always there on your side. If you use it as an NPC, what's the advantage over a regular class? Uh, the advantage, mola mola, would be that there's a little less to have to worry about if you go with one of these three sort of generic builds. Um, you know, you don't have to consider as much you'll consider more than just like a basic stat block in the monster manual um and they'll they'll do some basic leveling up beside you for survivability purposes um but if you want the if you want a full like nuanced class with customized whatever uh then just go with a f there's really in my opinion no reason why you shouldn't just gen up a second character of equal or lower level and go that route 
This this way though, you're getting options without it, I guess, being overwhelming, uh, and it's a, a little bit more streamlined way to play. Heck, you could probably even uh, apply this as, and and play one of these as a uh, a PC class. I don't think there's anything terribly broken. Could be interesting. Yeah, it lets people play something different. One thing that's an advantage if your players decide they want to start a kingdom or something uh, is on, uh, depending on roles being filled, your sidekick expert might be a perfect seneschal. Yeah, and so it could fulfill some uh, roleplay niches. Um, it could be, uh, it could even be a, a more fleshed out version of the retainers that a noble or a knight gets with that background package out of the player's handbook. And so you might be able to use that to flesh them out and make them not just, you know, one, one hit point non-combatants that follow you around and, uh, they're more fragile than a WWE referee. Black Wolf, that's fine. Do it, do what you gotta do. You don't need to worry. You all have your own lives to live, uh, your own attentions to pay to whatever you want. It's perfectly fine. So overall, you know, for this Unearthed Arcana, I like it. I see what it's going for. I don't think it's terribly, uh, you know, well, you might say, well, instead of Danger Sense from Barbarian, I think it'd be better if we swapped it out for something else that another martial class has. And experiment with it. Um, but as presented, I think it's solid. And it'd be worth trying at your tabletop if your DM or your PCs are, are willing to give it a go. Or heck, jet up a character. Right? Make a make a 15th level fighter. And then make a 15th level warrior. And see if one feels just absolutely worse than the other. Or if it's about the same the whole point of these workshops right you, you get some homework to do mercenaries okay Azrael no don't worry about it you say you're good at annoying him you're fine uh, daily says to Cory.dnd beyond officially supports all critical role content I've never uh, I've never seen that wizards officially endorses it but it's uh, but that it is not surprising. Elburn says the sidekick really is just a reworked version of the two, three, three, five henchmen. Yeah, uh, that's why I said Nodwick uh, is a good reference, which can be really useful, but only if your DM can deal with the extra baggage Nod Nodwick <laughs> that comes with a, uh, comes with it creatively. Yeah, you know, it, you you could threaten to overcomplicate things. Elbrin saying D&D Beyond is not Wizards. It is a separate company that has the rights to use and sell WotC stuff. Yep. It's good to know. Ah, uh, yes. Yep. Good old curse client. That turned into a, uh, its whole other business. Well, all right. Everyone. Hi. Thank you for reviewing the Unearthed Arcana sidekicks with me here. Awesome discussion. And I, I'm, I love the, the factoids that are dropping here um, about, you know, the, the nature of this and that. Um, why don't we take a five minute break? Use the restroom if you have to, refresh yourself. Perhaps get a piece of chocolate cake to enjoy with your friends here as we're celebrating the anniversary of the, uh, of the channel. 
And, uh... Oh, yeah. Well, after, with so many other uh, uh, VoIPs, uh, it, th that was really tough uh, to, uh, to keep up. Um, so we'll take a break, and when we come back, why don't we, uh, why don't we play a party game together, right? I can open up, uh, Jackbox Games, and, uh, we can play TKO. If y'all, hey, you are, you all are a bunch of nerds. You want to have a, a trivia, a trivia game? A murder trivia game? We could do that too. And of course, we'll have a piece of cake together too, because we deserve it. We've been together for so long. We've we've had so many adventures together. We've shared a lot. And I really appreciate that. So, five minutes, and then we'll get the stream reset up for for some fun together in a different way. Not that I'm departing from D and D. Uh, you know, I'm not gonna go into you know playing Fortnite or whatever. Um, but this is a special week of celebration of having fun and being together, and so let's play some let's play some uh, games together that kind of connect us, challenge us, and and we'll have fun. <laughs> 